Brianna, can you hear us? But yeah, I took a Yes, I can. Okay, great. But then they also sent us a video. Oh, that's me. It's a very great beginning. This is the very, very beginning. So after, after the Harris Fest, you know, really you'll see her bottom in her head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just like five seconds of pain in there, but it was cute. I was like, that's Danny. <laughs> Uh, Jerry, there will be um, one citizen trying to link up to us on here. Eric? No, not Eric. He's a Eric a a uh, But there will be a person, I believe, Burnett, Burnett, Bart, uh, Bart. Nettie or Nettie Coons. Oh. oh, you got good. If you need me to bring up any, no, that's great. That's good because somebody, those two citizens are going to yeah. talk about some concerns, and it'd be cool if we brought up the street, you know, do not I, that we don't know the streets. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> do I need a, a agenda brought up, or do we got that? Everybody should have the agenda. Okay. If I remember, did I, you see the yeah, the email from Chris? I didn't print it out. Make it, he's not going to make it. Okay. He sent a report. Mm -hmm. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah. Yesterday yeah, I did before. I didn't I got it. Sorry. I printed that off. I don't think if you guys need to make need to make topics or anything, let me know. Is that possible to have an agenda? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Who sent that, Bob? What did you see? Agenda or exactly the agenda? Okay. Yeah, it's on. You're, we found it this morning. It's June third, June thirtieth. I was trying to be that organized. June thirtieth. From Jackie? No. No. Oh. I sent the agenda. Oh. No. oh. I failed. <laughs> on, 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 I okay. oh, on June the Rob Camper on June third downtown went pretty cool. Oh, look at this. This is cool. It was nice. Well, you said again. He said, like, yeah, it's not cold here. The lot went out on the 13th. So we can actually start this animal stuff for the next one. I hope so. If they don't, I have to give this many great fundraisers. Oh, here's the email blog. But it was for notice. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try and find out the next year. Yeah, I'm going to get the region queued up. It was sent out to everybody. I thought I saw it. Right here, this one right here. June 30th. Uh oh, this has an attachment. This one here? That's the June, one. June 8th or? Uh, mm -hmm. last one. Was that the wrong one? Yeah, we went to like it. Well, that, that one you right there. There you go. That's it. Yep. Okay. Can, is that where you guys want uh -huh. to I knew. See, I didn't get. Could you fold when you have no. any copies? Uh, you want me to print that? His report. I would say a new one. I don't know. Well, that's what you can just forward it. There's a different one. Is there a newer one than this? No, that's the one. Oh, oh, July. <laughs> July okay, that makes sense. July 13th. Uh, no, you, you're June on 30th. June, June 30th. June 30th. You're doing the video. Or the video the yeah, June no. 30th. There we go. There, right you go. Here. there you go. I'm sorry. There we go. After a while, they stuck it all there. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'll look somewhere. That worked. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, okay. Good. There we go. Okay. Spencer's, as you guys see, behaving. Yeah. 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 No, all the grumpy. Yeah, somebody honked at him on the way in. That was me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled over. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he honks at him. I just pulled over and all that. Too. And then I, I need to deal with it. And then I had Tracy tell him to smile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Spencer, smile. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. He's mild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you're thinking other <laughs> They got a lot to do. I mean, that's a big cut in the world. I, I you know, as I drove past, they were really nice about 
eventually, you know, moving the equipment to, I, I know that's disruptive in there. No, they're, they know when you guys had the meeting, they were just going to work around it. So. Yeah. But we they have a long cut. I mean, it went extended far from where, so that's a big. Yeah. No, they're, uh, we're good, glad to get that wrapped up, finishing up. You guys did, a, did the fire department did a good job. Small building. Thank you. When will they occupy? It's it's going. Yeah. If you guys uh, uh, want to walk over, they give you a tour. You know, I'd love to. Like my time will run me to date, but uh, sometimes. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Five bedrooms and living area and three. Yeah, areas. it doesn't look like that from outside. Oh, no. It's very exciting, and there. I mean, there's small bedrooms, obviously, but yeah, there's five, and there's a little kitchen oh, living mm -hmm. space. Okay, cool. and, you got a pen. Thank you. I love the way they, they made the ex the extra excess road on the back side too, you know, so that maybe an awning or something in the back there though, because they're gonna their trailer's gonna get wet no matter. <laughs> I think told them they need to do a covered, like open covered area. And they're like, you got the one. <laughs> I don't know, but I think if they're I mean they got a cover on it, but it doesn't matter in Oregon with the trailer. <laughs> you know, have an awning over it. <laughs> Those pellets are gonna blow up. <laughs> I know. So yeah, I saw a, a gravel road going off into the trees on the side. It, it's sort of a trail. Like that side of the fire station? Fire station, but going off toward the river. Was I? <laughs> <laughs> You're not talking about the entrance to the back. No, not the entrance to the back. It was sort of like a... a like right out here? Yeah. You know, I'm not sure. Uh, people have made a pretty big path going out there. Yeah. Well, maybe that's it. Maybe you that's it. Yeah, it's busy. Is there a path that goes down to the river? And oh well, yeah, I know there's one on the top side, but there's no parking up there. Uh, you know, by the church. Yeah, like you, there's a beaten path. People walk. They park over here, and then they walk through the eco park, and then by the path all the way down. Yeah. Um, and okay. then they go through the frisbee golf and all that. What the, what the, yeah. yeah, that looks really pretty. Yeah. No, it's a pretty neat walk out through there. And yeah, we went I, we went up and parked by the yellow gates, but that's not it's too awesome. inviting over there right because there's no the group. <laughs> and the, the people don't like it. Yeah. In there, they get rowdy. I understand. I mean, you know. Uh, they've never had parked anyone in front of their house before. Oops. Testing, testing, one, two, three. We hear you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm I'm glad I know I'm there. <laughs> I'm the Gary. Hi, I'm the Gary. <laughs> I'm just fine. It's been a busy week. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll keep an eye open if the we has got the door unlocked. Okay, if our citizens appear. I'll make sure. Um, It's not, I, I talked to all of them to tell them their options. So, anyway, all right. You know, Eric signing on in another section over there. Yeah, Eric, yeah. Him, so. yeah. How are you? Awesome. How you doing? Good. 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 Yeah. All right, we're gonna. Okay, I'm gonna check with everybody on Zoom. If you could just raise your hand to tell me you can hear. Uh, Jennifer, uh, Brianna, you're okay? Yes. Uh, Gary, you can hear? I'm here. And Eric, can you hear? Eric's got his hand raised. Okay, thank oh. you. <laughs> You're a brilliant man. You know how to work the technology. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, and uh, let's go through introductions. Uh, I'm Bob Camber. I'm the chairperson for the commission. Uh, Kathy Jones, the secretary. Uh, Deanna Balakar, vice chair. Jerry Nelzine, city of Canby. I'm Clint Coleman, board member. Uh, Tracy Ansley, council president, liaison to the submission. Jerry Bryant, board member. Oh, okay. Thank you, Jerry. Mm, Jody Driscoll, board member. 
Uh, Brianna? Brianna Adada, planning liaison. Uh, and Eric, if you can unmute. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Eric Van Zandt, board member. Good morning, everybody. And then uh, is taking donations. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first order for business is for our review of our minutes. Um, thank you, Jackie. Uh, of the June uh, 8th meeting, um, is there a motion to approve? I have a motion that we have an edit to make. Did I got email? Okay. From Don Hardy. He had a clarification regarding the enterprise on a car. Um, he said that that should stay the enterprise. Car is required to have one off site parking space for the city parking requirements. I left out the city part, but it was the city requirement instead of um, another allowed one off on street parking space. And then he also reached out to Chris at Enterprise a few times uh, regarding the cater home parking arrangements that were negotiated, and he'll continue to coordinate. So, I move we approve the June 8th, 2022 minutes with those revisions. Okay. Uh, is there a second? I second that. Sorry about that. No, uh, is there any other uh, edits and things like that? If not, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Approved. And. Uh, Jackie, will you submit a edited uh, minute yes. to me so that I can send it to um, uh, Maya for posting? Thank you so much. Um, I always applaud the secretary. That's a, <laughs> that's a lot of time. That's a, that's, a, that's a tough job. I appreciate it. Um, okay, we had um, on the on the request, I had three citizen, uh, two citizen, two new citizens, and I talked to both of them and talked to them about our meeting process. And so I'm surprised they're not here, but they could show up a little late. Maybe it's you know mechanical issues. Um, so I'd like to just go back to talk about Barbara Carmel. She had uh, two months ago had a appeared and talked about um, her concerns of, about territorials, North Territorial. Um, and I just wanted to give some closure to that about what we did. Um, as you know, we uh, Spencer provided uh, uh, speed data, and then all of, all of you were sent out that information. Uh, on, if you want to reference it again on June 25th, um, and it highlights that there is a good spot of speeding on that roadway. Um, uh, for example, actually there are 9.76 vehicles per day speeding between 16 and 42 miles an hour on that roadway, and that's over the speed. Um, so, uh, and all of the information is there. So that information was provided to the chief of police. Also, officer may come to share. Um, this, the roadway does have speed signs. I talked to Spencer. They have a lot of have adequate speed signs to, to be, help people to slow down. Um, and then what I did was um, I submitted a request on behalf of the uh, commission to the Canby Police Department, uh, their uh, speed watch radar trailer. Yeah, I saw it out there. Okay, that's the that's the request form. I found that out and I said, oh, well, I might as well submit it and get it done. And so I submitted it and I attached our traffic study, our speed study onto it as data. Um, so hopefully they will have that up. Um, I don't know if anything else we can do. I, I do have a, but that's for later in the agenda. Uh, does anybody else have any, have any other suggestions? Thanks for looking all that data for us. For one of all. I think one idea that I would just have, you know, throw it out there is, 
like when a neighbor goes in, uh, maybe with the city and the citizens would partner on certain specific busy roads, and maybe the citizens would come together and buy one digital sign for one side, and the city would buy it for the other, it's like the developer, kind of a partnership. Well, the whole citizenry, because a lot of times the developers fall and have to pay for this, that, and the other. And it would just seem like that might be a way of. <clears throat> Where were we on that? Uh, did we check into that to see if that was okay? Like, um, I don't know. I know we talked about it. I don't know about this. About it. Would you be willing to write up that idea? Sure. So that, yeah. so, you know, I can, I can pass it, go through Tracy, because uh, my, my, I got to behave and follow procedure. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I mean, you take a donation on good call cords and stuff. It's just, just probably some sort of process. Thanks. I will definitely look into that. Because, I mean, I know this year the budget is kind of thin in the traffic signals because of all the work on Ivy Street. But maybe by next year we'll be back into some kind of rotation where we can have speed signs. But uh, I guess the reason I might get back up and interrupt for just a second. Oh, right. <clears throat> um, so like where Miss Barbell, is that her name? Yes. Okay. Carmel. Uh, okay. Just thinking on that particular street, maybe the city would buy one for one side and the whole Northwood neighborhood that lives along there that's affected would buy the other one. And uh, mm -hmm. that would be challenging. I mean, that idea could work on 13th, it could work on ter parts of territorial, it could work on township. It, uh, and it was just an idea. Yeah, I think too, I'm making headway with being able to hook them up to our street lights. Okay. I've been working, talking to Camp Utility about that. So we don't have to. I don't know how much of a cost costs. I know it costs quite a bit. I mean, about five or six thousand, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Probably six now with everything, but yeah. Okay. Um, May I interrupt real quick? I'm so sorry. I didn't catch exactly what are we talking about installing for the six to nine thousand dollars that would help. Oh, digital speed signs. In other words, oh, I'm, yeah, I love that. There are affairs around town where you know their police aren't able to watch dog those areas enough. Uh, those digital speed signs seem to be pretty effective tools. Yep. And that might be a way of uh, doing a public-private partnership. To get more of those out in the community. Uh, one idea I will throw out is that I'm going to talk about it a little later in the agenda. It's called uh, the Red Flex system that uh, Clint was terrific in trying to champion a few years ago. Um, and that's computer uh, ticketing system, to tell you the truth, uh, for speed and for illegal left. Uh, red, turning on red lights. And we'll be talking about that as a, in many communities. Well, okay, I'll just leave that there because I think it's an answer to a lot of the speeding problem concerns that we have in, in our community. Um, okay, I don't have the other two. Is there any questions about this? Is Carmen, Barbara Carmel. So I will close her. Concern now at this point because we've done everything I think we can. The only other thing that I would recommend is that those neighbors should be the ones complaining to um, to police because I mean if it's affecting your neighborhood, complain to the right people. I know that's what I do with our neighborhood or even activities I see in a church behind my property. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to move on to old business, the enterprise car rental update. I think Jackie indicated on there uh, to summarize um, the planning department. Uh, Mr. Harding is continuing to monitor and work with the enterprise car rental. They're on the verge. I'm not too sure clear that they got a contract with the um, Feudal home or not. Sounds like it's still being negotiated. Yeah. So I think he's monitoring it. And so we're going to keep it on the agenda until something is solidified. But it looks like that's the path that they're going to have a, 
uh, a number of stalls at the funeral home to alleviate utilizing public uh, roadways for their fleet. And we also talked and Mr. Harding and I about um, that would be an issue to really look at when we they re-examine the traffic safety, a traffic safety system plan. Traffic system. And, and also the city codes to have a better um, view of those kinds of system problems as we modernize our, our city codes. Any questions or statements? Okay, next on the agenda is uh, CIP priorities. Let me remember that this was a discussion that uh, we were gonna start um, uh, as a, only as a recommendations to pu public works about what, what are the CIP you know, uh, priorities from our perspective that they should consider. Um, what I did for, for that discussion, I think I sent out an email to you folks, um, starting that discussion with, um, you know, in order to have a good discussion instead of just, um, this is just my perspective, okay? In order to have a good discussion, priority. You Sorry, know, guys. Criteria. <laughs> we can make light of Didn't this, get Jamie. to the mute fast enough. <laughs> Can you guys hear okay? Oh, yes. I sneezed in there. Yeah, I was just sneezing at you. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I sent out an email uh, to everyone uh, on Ju July 6th uh, listing some criteria for CIP budget items. <laughs> and I thought, at least for this month, if I'm going to read the criteria that I put together. I asked for comments. I didn't get any, which is okay. I know my work was so perfect that it did not on the case. <laughs> but um, I thought today at least we could start with talking about or getting input about a criteria for looking at CIP. By CIP is capital improvement projects. Um, we're really talking about roadways that should be improved, you know. Um, um, Jerry has done a great job, and if you were to, like I directed last time, if you go to the um, city website under the budget, it does have the projected uh, overview of the five-year CIP projects listed right now, and that gives you a little bit of format as far as uh, what, what's projected presently and has been passed. Is that a, do you want me to make a copy, or are you writing on that? Well, it just says the page. Do you take a copy for every one of this? Sure. That makes yeah, so you guys come you, you check it too. It's the picture. Yeah. Um, uh, at least that's the one I took yep. recently off. Yep. Um, the criteria that I wrote, um, and like I say, it's nothing's in stone, okay? I was just sitting there at the computer just jamming my ideas up. Criteria, and this is not in any particular order. Um, criteria for CIP budget is the roadway is a connector street or frequently used connector street. By connector street, there is something in the transportation system studies that identify certain roads that are connect the city and are used. But of course, the, the system study is 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So things have obviously changed a lot. So that's why I have to use Frequently, this is a connector street, you know. Um, do we want to be so specific to say only connector streets, or do we want to say that it's kind of in descending order based on how busy the street is? Because we probably have some out there that aren't connector streets that we might want to pay some attention to as well. That's why I was saying it can be used as well. That's just one of the criteria. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got the list. And then um, the second is the actual condition of the street. Um, you know, if the street hasn't been paved in many years and it has lots of ruts and bumps and things like that, that should be a criteria. Um, last date of major repair. Um, the safety of the roadway. So some of these may over, override it being a connector street because the safety of that road is so serious that people want to bring it up. 
the need for separation of pedestrian and traffic, uh, vehicle traffic. Um, if the busy road and they have no sidewalks and things like that, that should be a criteria for our safety, you know. Um, and then I threw in other special circumstances. <laughs> And they can argue, the person can argue that there are special circumstances, you know, such as um, there's a new development going in. And that particular roadway, for whatever reason, needs to be updated or something, you know. Um, so I just throw those out as, as a basis to start to have some criteria that as we put into discussions, and especially if you're going to make some kind of priority list that you have something to base your conversation on. Any thoughts? For the, uh, go ahead. I might be, we might be getting in the weeds a little bit. Isn't this kind of already what you do? <laughs> now, I guess, I mean, this, on this what part of that you're asking, that I, I've made this list yes. on my own without really any input, but prioritizing this list with this group for recommendation would be helpful to me. Okay. Um, the other thing that would be helpful is we need to think about is a separate list of county roads that we've taken over that we have money for. Yes. For project. Does that make sense? That would be helpful to me. I mean, I mean, I don't want you guys to get into, but but like I would like support on getting 10th Street done. You know, uh, Pine Street is kind of out there, but the the realignment I'd like to do over there, but kind of look at what we're what well, my holdup is, is um, we're kind of waiting for our finance director to give us an overall where we're at funding wise so that we can, and then that'll help you guys. But as far as like Locust is starting this year, like in a couple weeks and this territorial project, but we need to look at next year. Yeah, right. So my, I guess my whole thing is, is I just don't want us, not, not me, I'm the liaison, but I don't want this, this body, whoever might make up the board at any given time, getting into the weeds of kind of showing you how to do your job mm -hmm. and you're the one out there all the time. You know what the roads yep. are like, you know the last repair dates, you know all of that criteria already. So I guess if this body is wondering about criteria, they should look to you for what kind of help you want, what kind of criteria is important to you. How for what do yep. you need, Jerry? Yeah. Like the the uh, right now I'm gonna move try to move forward with this list. But if if this group sees the safety or a higher priority of an area or something like that, I would love to hear about it. And if you guys want any information on the road condition, all that, I have all that information also. Sure. And all that. Yeah. No, I appreciate that, Tracy. I, I, I appreciate what Tracy's saying and what you're saying. This was not meant to serve or take away from your authority to do anything. This was, you know, if we start having a conversation about a roadway, we should have some criteria about, you know, trying to say how important it is. You know, I mean, um, and the, we, we're not necessarily going to try to change your list. This is just for our. What this is kind of my wish list, so <laughs> it would be nice to have it when it goes to council that you guys, this committee, supports sure. it because you guys live here. I don't. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And to tell you the truth. If you look at the criteria that I suggested, yeah, it matches with what you're. The, yeah, so that's that's great. That's good, right? I yeah. I had that in mind when I was looking at this before me and looking at the criteria. I said, okay, most of the projects here <laughs> sort of fit. I mean, the smaller ones, you know, um, like the cul-de-sac. I don't know, I North Twelfth and and North Ivy cul-de-sac. I mean, you know. I don't know that one at all, so I, I couldn't even figure out that. But but there there are smaller pockets of money that you have available that you can't do a major project, but you can do something you know, yeah, needed. Um, anyway, and it helps with the committee because we're all in different areas of the community yes. too, so um, we can kind of see what's going on. Yeah. Any thoughts? Okay. Hey, Hi guys, but I had two items that might fall into special considerations that I think would benefit the community to consider. So the number one one is the proximity to schools. 
um, how close is it to schools and common walkways and areas that we're going to see a lot of traffic for underage kids. If it's the elementary school kids or the high school kids, whatever, I think we should be giving them all um, some consideration from a safety perspective with the streets and the uh, pedestrian access. And then the other one is um, proximity to 99 because we're gonna just keep seeing 99 get busier and busier. And if we want the city to keep feeling livable and accessible, I think we're gonna wanna pay special attention to the streets coming off of 99, all these arteries that are being used to get around town and into the smaller neighborhoods, which um, that's probably not exactly you know, a news flash. I'm sure that's a certain level of consideration already, but since it wasn't explicitly stated, I thought I'd add that in. Which, which we are. Which is good, Jenny, because we have to work on IV fines on there to get that connected oh, to the other nine. So, so yeah, I appreciate that. Okay. And how Why do you guys feel about the prioritization for the uh, school access and proximity? I will. I'm going to just add those two thoughts to this growing list and send it out again to you folks. So, I mean, this isn't something that is a one-time discussion. I thought we'd just start the process of introducing this so that you can start thinking along these lines. And if you see projects, and maybe like Jerry said, we can look at the you can look at the CIP. It's on page not 84 and 85 of the city budget online. So if you go okay. online, you can see the current uh, CIP project, and you can maybe. Everybody can look at it this coming month and next month that we can kind of go into the weeds and, and really talk about it, uh, why this criteria fits with this, just so we understand. And at some point, like Jerry said, we may want to, if we feel motivated, we may want to support some of these being done. Can I, can I interject something here? Sure. Yeah, um, I know that in previous discussions, we've had the um, county concerning the uh, Knights Bridge. Uh, we talk about the state and dragging their feet on repairing of 99. Um, as soon as anybody finds out, in my case, somebody that they lean on me saying, Gary, this is a problem. And one of the ones that I unofficially checked on personally was the traffic light there at um, by Fred Meyer and 99, The uh, is that Pine Street or Redwood there? Redwood, Sequoia. Red, Redwood. I, I unofficially clocked that traffic light at five seconds. It stayed green for five seconds. Two cars got on the 99 and boom, went to yellow and red. Then I saw it again, took about 12 seconds. So I don't know what the state does about the timing on that light. It's definitely not a priority to them because there's cars backed up to um, Sequoia and um, but it's it's sporadic. And that's that's uh, what we're dealing with here is uh, situations that aren't constant. So let's I don't know how much we can get through the county and the state on something like this. I I called them once a week for the last I don't know a couple of months. Uh, they say they're working on it, but it doesn't seem like <laughs> very fast. Uh, I'll call them in there. <laughs> uh, I mean, like I said, it was uh, uh, it was just happened. I was at that intersection, and a friend of mine lives on the other side of the tracks there, and they their kids got across there. They have to go shopping, and what's the deal with that short timed light? So I've been having a <laughs> bomb bar ask ODOT, and that helps too. Okay. Like, everyone sent an email to ask ODOT. Why is it this way? The more that they get pressured, they have to respond to it, so they'll make their signal people go fix it. Okay. If you guys could pass the word on email them on AskODOT, that would help me too. And, and there's also that consideration on uh, on Art no, no Ellen Road Art Road the one coming into well at Knights Bridge there, and Barlow where the sign for uh, truck traffic to 99, you can hardly see it with the with the trees blocking it. The county has to do something about that because we still have the truck the tr truck traffic coming across Knights Bridge and into residential areas. So, I, so please, I will sit, resend out the, the input that people have get for the criteria. And if everybody can look at the CIP budget from the, the current one, 
then we can kind of have a discussion about that next time. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, next on the agenda on the new business is um, we jumped down. Okay. Uh, emergency earthquake transportation plan for Canby by Jenny. You wanted to talk about that. Well, I just wanted to throw out there, the reason that I asked for that information was because I was generally curious and I've seen where the slow lane in 99 as you're heading westward has had a couple instances where the whole lane collapsed in and went down the side of the road. I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not, but it happens periodically and it closes down the slow lane. And my concern was, Hmm, what kind of information is available? Because they're about to reroute all kinds of heavy semi trucks off of 205 and down 99 and into town as they're working on 205. And I'm like, if this is going to be a real big safety concern, that stuff is going to be collapsing or there's going to be issues with the road uh, stability. I was kind of curious about that as well as just general um, assessments that might have been done for an actual kind of earthquake event. So the information that we have doesn't address the specific instances of damage and repair, but it does provide information about um, what has been done to date looking at the overall condition of the road, sands, the issues that we're seeing as one-offs, and it provides information um, or links to information to some work that Clackamas County did to assess earthquake um, stability and readiness. Um, I don't want it to be something that we all have to jump on right now at all. Um, I haven't had a chance to read through all of it, but I wanted to pass it along once I got it, just so it was available to anyone who had the interest and the time to dive into it. Um, if we were all going to look at it, I'd actually propose perhaps we look at it for like the November meeting or something where we just kick it down the road a couple months and give people some time to look through it and see what the level of interest is. Um, but I was just, I was curious in general. I was curious specifically about the um, the road crumbling and falling down the ravine <laughs> and how that might affect things. Um, and I thought that it might be useful for any um, any kind of pushback the city might choose to make about the redirection of uh, heavy traffic down 99 as 205 was being worked on. So. Thank you. Any comments from anybody? I was under the impression you were looking for an emergency route out of the area uh, in the event of an earthquake. <clears throat> I lived in areas where there's numerous earthquakes and there is no route out. The earthquake will take care of that real quick. Um, yeah. Uh, it's like a tsunami. We could prepare for that. You know, I mean, there's only so much you can uh, prepare for, but uh, being in the um, epicenter of an earthquake, um, it's scary and uh, things collapse around you and under you. Uh, I, and I think we're all trying to uh, stabilize, like our Knights Bridge, we're trying, gonna re uh, stabilize that. Uh, no, it's nothing, not, I'm, I'm not shooting arrows into your, your issue here. It's just that um, there's only so much, I'm not gonna back up the state, they drag their feet on enough as it is, but um, Good luck <laughs> trying to get out of an area that's been devastated by an earthquake because it'll it'll tear up everything. Oh yeah, no part the the specific request was about um, you know the the earthquake um, I don't know what the official uh, term would be but you know just what the um, assessment would be in earthquake situations. Um, I think we can all, we all know that pretty much every way out is going to collapse. 99 is going to go down. Yeah. The road, um, 99 over by the Ford, that's toast. Like any of these little bridges that go over the rivers, they're done. Either you're in Canby when the earthquake happens or you're out of Canby, but you're not going to be going between them for a while, except maybe on foot if you can cross the river. Like, the, is it the Malala River? Where it's, no. What is the really, um, the, the river that might possibly be uh, passable that goes under 99 over by um, Dutch Brothers? So, Which river is that? Malala. Oh, Malala. the Malala. Okay, it is Malala. That's what I thought. Okay, sorry, I haven't lived here forever. Um, but yeah, the, you might be able to go down and back up there on foot if you get lucky. But anyways, um, I wanted to know just what their level of assessment had been, what they said about it, and make sure that that information was available to anybody who was doing. Because we talked to, I talked to Jerry a bit before, and they're looking at just overall emergency preparedness and guidance for the community and I just wanted to make sure that we had whatever pieces of information were officially available 
as part of that, not that it's necessarily going to change anything for anybody. Tracy, yeah, well, just I, awareness. Yeah, comment on this. Well, yeah. this this was a yeah. council goal, wasn't it, and to hire someone to get us up to speed on this? There, well, like we were going to get our Scott's going to work on. I think it's going to be part of the TSP that we're reading. Okay. Well, yeah, that needs work. I mean, it definitely does. It makes me nervous, just like Jenny. But we, um, right now, um, we have like quarterly meetings with the school board, with the fire department, with police at the police station and go over scenarios like this and set up EOC. Um, as far as um, like stuff to provide citizens, I don't think we're at that point yet. But um, we do have a plan. a plan. We have a plan, and we have a uh, we have a team for this. But it's only going to get better. It 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 takes the it's like uh, it's like Jenny said. You're either going to be in Canby or you're not. Like we went through that on the ice camp. <laughs> yeah. And the flood of '96. Yeah, the flood. It's the staff that's lives in Canby that's going to be taking care of Canby, all of us that live outside. Like, I was able to get in, but I did a lot of damage to my pickup getting here for the ice storm. But um, as far as that's another thing of, like, the fire station being down here, there'll be people here 24-7 with access to our equipment, clearing roads. So, but the bigger thing is, is we are, we do have a team, we have a group, we work with, this. our biggest fear of the whole thing, our last scenario that we did, Jenny, was, like, the kids that are at school or, you know, preparing for that because they're going to be stuck there for a while and while we get stuff open. And so, I mean, that's not to be all over the place, but we do have meetings. We're working on it. We're trying to beef up on that. And, um, and Chief Davis is kind of spearheading that whole thing. So with, um, what's unique about Camby, I was looking at the map in prep for this, for that discussion is that, we are surrounded by a lot of rivers. Uh, you know, uh, we have the Malala Bridge down there. We have Knight Bridge. So that cuts, and then we have the, I, the bridge on Ivy Street going over the Malala River and over there. So, I mean, it, that whole access to leave on the going that way is limited by the function of the, the ability of those bridges to stay up. There's a, and then there's a whole Barlow Road Barlow section of the of you know camp sort of an extension of Canby that is blocked in by the Malala Bridge and the Pudding River Bridge at, at and then the Malala Bridge on the other side you know up on the top so those people maybe if those bridges fail will be blocked into that place until some emergency is is remedied. I've been to probably <laughs> I've been to probably a dozen different trainings about this, and the more I go to, the more the scarier it is. Yes, it is absolutely frightening. And if you go like online and watch YouTube, Allison Perch is her name, and she works for an engineering firm out of Portland, and she does uh, YouTube videos. She does presentation. I'd love to have her come to the city of Canby and do a presentation, but. She gives four different scenarios, and one of the scenarios is it liquefies Canby, where it takes everything, liquefies it, the tide backs up, and this building is is under 11 feet of water. So the, the major one is really bad for Canby, and so um, our soil is very sandy, so it, it, it just turns it, it, everything's gone, you know. The other ones are where, like you say, it takes the bridges out. I've prepared for that. You know that type of scenario uh, getting our roads open um, prepared for drinking water when our, our system goes bad we have wells that we can hook up because wells survive it our, our infrastructure doesn't um, like this whole public works parking lot no one realizes it but it's sitting on six feet of rock so i'll dig that up to open access and stuff like that we will we prepare we have pipe extra pipe for culverts to get it over there and we're preparing for that type of stuff, just depending on how bad it is. But um, and then having public works, this will be a shelter area with our. Now that we're set up a generator, and everything runs on this whole thing. We're setting up uh, uh, city hall 
with generator power. It'll be more to keep communications up. Our police station is completely self-sustained on generator. And then the biggest thing is um, I just did the RFQ. It's uh, actually due today. And so uh, for design of and build of a new fuel station down here, it's ran off emergency power. There'll be 20,000 gallons of diesel here so that we can keep water going, drinking water, wastewater, all that stuff going on events. So we are actually a lot better off than other cities, but we can do better, Jenny. And that's, I, I appreciate you bringing this up because it just keeps a reminder. It is coming. Yeah, I'm not trying to pressure anybody either. I just know that you were working on it. I was like, well, this might be another piece of information to consider and look at. So that's why I was saying for the larger group, I'm not proposing that we take action on it or do any deep dive reviews, especially in the near future. But if we did want to review it and look at it, we might look at it a few months down the road when people could have some time and we don't need to look at it either. I mean, I'll look at it at some point because I was interested and I asked for it and I still haven't had a chance to, but I don't necessarily expect everybody else to if they're not interested. Yeah, to prepare for this well, so. Bless you guys hard for, I applaud you guys for what you, the, the plan that you've done already and the things you've put in place, which is, you know, really a good emergency response. The other thing is, is that we have a building here, and I can tell anyone where it's at, but um, Rotary has got completely jammed full of generators and everything for this when this event happens. That people can, Rotary member, or Chris Nichols or someone, whoever's around will will manage that and check these, these equipment out so people can share it. Generators keep their freezers going, all that stuff. So we've done all right, but we can do better for sure. Have, in your quarter, the only thing I've asked is in the quarterly meeting that you have with the county to see what their what their uh, rating is for these various bridges that are going outside. Now, like the one, the bridge on Ivy, that's a fairly new bridge. Fairly. See the bridge. The bridge is. Um, I have it inspect by payout to inspect our bridges and then they inspect county bridges every two years okay and they're i don't know i mean i can get you all that information but it does, it's it's even our uh even our walking bridge 99 gateway bridge or whatever you want to call it I, that one's even rated the one over fourth avenue so uh the only one that didn't pass earthquake rating was knight's bridge okay huh. So they're re that's why it's going to be closed and they're reconstructing it. So, so that's reassuring in some ways. That yeah, every bridge is you can't predict what the earthquake is going to be like, but at least on the on the ground level, <laughs> I'm just on confused on what information you guys want me to get on that. I I just I know that they're all every two years they're recertified. If there's an issue, the weight rating, like Knights Bridge is a perfect example. They they check that every two years. This last time they inspected it, they said this won't take an earthquake. So now they're now they're reconstructing it. It's going to happen what next summer. The guy came to talk. Yes, here, right? yes, he already. Yeah, so I remember that discussion, and he was not aware about two hundred five and all of that. Yeah. So he was going to have to go back and find out if that timeline was going to work. Did we get an update on that yet? The timeline. Oh, oh yeah, yes. They're okay. working on that. Yes. With our ninety nine project, no, we. Sorted through that. Okay. Yeah, it's they're gonna. Okay, that was my question. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So if if it got sorted, which one comes first? Ninety nine. Ninety nine is up. Is the bid closed for the project last week? So uh, they will. They however long our the process takes. Now that it's closed, they select a contractor. To get it approved and get started, so they'll be starting construction pretty soon, like in a couple okay. months, maybe. They want to. It's a two-year process. They'll do all the ADA ramps, all the improvements this year throughout the winter, and then the following summer they'll come through and um, pave. And then the bridge project. Who knows when they're going to get that done? I I see that going out three four years. I really the bridge, the Knights Bridge. I do. I don't. So know. we could have an earthquake between now and then. Yeah, and, and, no and it, but yeah, and there's, no it, 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 there's no bridge. There's no bridge. Hopefully, you all have the same manner, you know, the Ivy Bridge, the Good Bridge. <laughs> but at least we haven't had a major earthquake so far. So, so let's, far. Well, let's hope it continues that way until the 
but it's on their priority list. That's the main thing. We can only do our best and try to put things in place. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That's all we can do here. You know, and if it's yep. if the project is on a goal, we did our job. We've done a good job. They yeah. know they have to do it. They've said they're planning yeah. to do it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'd things. rather be on the list than not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. I'm glad they're we're on the list. For sure. they're yeah. not on the bridge. So okay. yeah. <laughs> well, the bridge, I don't know what's gonna happen. So yeah. quickly, Jerry, because yeah. I get asked this question a lot, I just yes. want to be clear. The, the 99 project, it's gonna start soon as far as yes. the ADA and sidewalks and stuff. Yeah, and I can get you I In have fall, a, winter. I months. have a full construction schedule that I sent Scott. Did he send that to you? If he did, it's buried in my hands. Do you want me to forward that? Uh, that would be great. I'm going to take it up and forward it to Bob and you can share it with everyone. Sure, yeah. That would be great. Yeah. So if we're going to see paving probably summer it, 23. Yeah, it'll it'll lay out what they're doing. and um, it's, I would take a question. Okay, yeah. 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 Let's see. Like it's coming. It's coming, really. I promise. <laughs> Eventually, it'll be here. Okay. okay. So Sorry. we will. Any other thoughts on that last that issue? I'm going to move on. <laughs> I'm going to be a time manager that will keep you here for the rest of my life. Um, <laughs> all right, moving on. The next one is speed data reports. Uh, I've sent out uh, on the 25th, I sent out the speed data from the North Township, and you also got a recopy of the territorial one. Uh, my reports. I hope these are helpful. Yes. Um, they're condensed and a little bit more. Um, and as you can see, uh, the North Territorial one, I just gave you a preview. I mean, that, that there's quite a bit of, a lot of people obey the law, okay? And there's a lot of people who, you know, that five mile kind of over the speed limit, not bad. But there's also a substantial group of people who are moving rapidly, uh, like I said, between 10 and 16 and 42 miles over the speed limit. Now that starts to be really speed, a lot of speed. That was on the territory. And on the township, that's over the speed limit. Pardon me? 42 over the speed limit. Yeah, over, I I over, the, over the speed limit. I've seen and it. And on 30 like, miles an hour in that territory. Or thirty. Jeez. Yeah. And on, on, on a township, on one one actual township, on a township, actually this reflects eleven point seven vehicles per day were speeding sixteen to forty five miles over the speed limit, and that's township. You know, that's right in the middle of a very busy oh, yeah. occupied area. Um, and by school too. And with a lot of kids walking around. Um, Jenny's criteria about, you know, these, and we will continue to generate these reports. Every month, Spencer is really good about moving the device. So we will have another report. Um, and these are being shared with the police department. I just think that there's a lot of speeding going on. Really? In, in our town, which leads to a start of a conversation, okay? I think we really do need, as a commission, to revisit the Red Flex speed system, okay? Now, and I would like the present, I would recommend that the presentation be geared toward the whole, that if we put in a Red Flex system, they would not be one ticket generated by that system. That would be the goal, because if that happened, that means nobody was speeding, and nobody, nobody was making illegal left, you know, red turns on red lights. Um, so that would be the goal of the system. Now the uniqueness: there's two new things about the system in in uh, in. Beaverton, in Woodburn, in Sherwood, Sherwood Milwaukee. Milwaukee, you go on and on. This is a common system that's being operated in all of these uh, towns. 
And I believe that we should be asking for the county, the city to look into this system, not just for use on 99, but within our city streets, ones that we identify that are real problematic, such as territorial, township, 13th, 13th right? Where we get constant complaints about the speeding on those. And I'm thinking that if they ever put a toll <laughs> on, on the bridges. When? When <laughs> they put the toll on the bridge? When? Okay, when? when? That traffic's going to flow through our city more. And we're going to have people more zooming through our city. That we need to have this approval and the system in place to cope with this kind of system to slow the traffic down and to be safe for our citizens. Yeah, we need to demonstrate that there's consequences for bad behavior because if you do that, then the behavior improves. Yes, and I, I believe. When we would put out a massive campaign about telling people there's computer enforcement here, slow down. My goal is not to give anybody a ticket. Plus, then the police can be working on other issues within the city. Because to me, when, well, I mean, I like to. I mean, there are times when I do speed, but most of the time when I no, I can't. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and it just makes me more aware when there's something about uh, hey, you're going over because some people are not not paying attention. Uh, we had an incident that happened within the last month. Um, I was up having my coffee and we heard a loud commotion. Um, and on 13th Street, we had a guy driving a company vehicle. GPS clocked him at 48 miles per hour over the speed limit. Ooh. And he crashed into my neighbor's fence. Mm -hmm. And he could have crashed into Ratcliffe House mm -hmm. or Ratcliffe Place um, or into like a sign because we have our brick sign out there too. Or but, um, sign. Yeah, and I'm just thankful no one was walking or anything, but um, I don't know what happened with the guy and why it happened, but that was just kind of alarming when you see somebody in a backyard and they're <coughs> thankful it didn't go through their fence, but it's like, okay, 13th, we have the sign that says you're going over the speed limit, but that even helped. And I don't know how he got 48 over the speed limit when there's a stop sign at 13th and L, and I'm thinking he probably ran it. Mm -hmm. and stop because people people do they run the stop signs i'd like to see something happen even with the stop signs where if you can get a ticket somehow but let the police go help out domestic violence or other issues within the community than monitoring people that should be driving safely and not only that we, we're demonstrating i think in our traffic studies that speeding is throughout the city Police cannot be everywhere, all of the town. Um, and this is continuing to grow the community and there's pressure on budgets. That's not a good mix. The nice thing about the red flex system recently, and in, in, uh, it made an adjustment that before every ticket had to be reviewed by a police officer before it was approved. And in Portland, they've actually, and I think this is statewide, they've made an adjustment that a civil servant, a trained civil servant, can review the, 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 the clips and approve them or not. So it becomes less of a manpower drain on the police departments uh, to have such a system. Uh, that doesn't, and a system doesn't preclude a police officer still giving traffic tickets. You know, um, it just helps to calm things. Uh, I just want you folks to think about it and maybe put it on the agenda for discussion next month. I'm in the process of trying to contact whoever. I've got a call into Woodburn 
police and then I called the Arizona uh, main office of Red Flex, and I'm still waiting to try to find out local representative here. I'm sure would be the most helpful. Okay, I'm happy to help you with that. Right. Okay, if we can find a, a lot of on that yeah, already. yeah, if you can find the local representative of that Red Flex system. Uh, the beauty of, from what I can understand, there's a lot of the computer. They they left up all the computer. Looks like the computer devices on a 99. Now that I don't know. At least it looks like it. You know, if you drive down 99, and oh, yeah, it, it looks like some of the things. devices are still up on the, from the previous study. So, uh, any thoughts about this discussion? Yes, Jen. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, in general, I like the idea of something that shows what your speed is and flashes at you if you're going over. I think that those are really effective in other communities and especially for people who are not local to a specific area, it's a good reminder slash warning slash alert that, hey, you're going too fast. Um, I've gotten the impression from previous conversations and comments Tracy's made that the city is really not super jazzed about putting in anything that might be perceived as ticket generation. So perhaps would we be able to float the idea of there being a warning issued for something that's a lower infraction, like in the neighborhood of like five, six, seven over even, that you get a warning before you would get a ticket for, and that would kind of help get the local people on board with, you need to go the right speed here. And if you have people who are just flying through, obviously there needs to be zero discussion or considerations, like you're just mm -hmm. obviously doing something wrong. But maybe that would mitigate some of the community concern, but then also still be able to have the effect of getting people to chill out and slow down in areas where they're speeding through. I think Clint wants to address that. I'll address two things. Um, first of all, Sherwood has had the system up for many, many years in their uh, review of it they find that only about 8% of the tickets issued live in that particular zip code. Yeah, I so, figured. Second of all, so that's really the key thing. Second of all, because, um, you know, I think in most communities, fire department enjoys a superstar status and police, um, you know, they don't want to be unpopular with the citizenry. They do a good job. It's a tough job. It's an unpopular yep. job at times. And so in thinking back, one of the things that came, I think, to you too, Bob, was when Red Flex came out before and they got permission from ODOT, they got permission from the police chief in the city to hang up their devices on 99. What it was really identifying is does this community have a problem? Does it have a problem with speeders? Does it have a problem with people running red lights? And it was a slam. I mean, it was over overwhelming the problem. And so the way that I would recommend teeing it up in the future is if we get the approval of the police chief, the city, and ODOT to hang the devices again, we show that data to the citizens and we go to the city council, we point out as a group, this is a serious problem we have in our community. This is our recommendation, but we would like the citizens to weigh in and see if they are concerned about this problem. I want them to take ownership of this. If they don't think this is a problem, um, that's another problem. That makes yeah. sense. And the most important thing to address, Jenny, is I don't know the logistics and I don't really want to publicize this, but there is a, there is a, because it's a computer generated system, there's a, a, a level at which speeding over the limit isn't ticketed. Yeah. You know, there's a, yeah. there's a cushion. There's a buffer. It's about a six there's, mile an hour buffer. Yeah. yeah. So there's a buffer already built into it. We wouldn't yeah. even necessarily need to do anything. Yeah. So okay. Ordinary that, that five, six miles that all of us will, you know, above. When yeah, they won't use. even usually issue a digital ticket unless you're going like 20 miles an hour over the limit. And I wouldn't say 20, but, yeah, but it's, it, it's, you know, it's, it, there is a, there's a buffer there. I'll talk about those, those systems. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the police, I think, 
you know, I think there's a six mile an hour buffer again, unless you're in a school zone. And then I think they certainly have their discretion and uh, it's wet out, there's children present. Yeah. So it's, yes. yep. it's built in there in the system is already built in that ordinary traffic buffer. Um, it's not something you want to publicize because you don't want to encourage people to be. Exactly, yeah. 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 So but, uh, putting in something temporary, you're saying hanging them, Clint. So like this would be a temporary thing. People would see that it's just kind of gathering data. I think well, actually, I would anticipate there'd be a lot less negative feedback to a temporary setup to gather data than there would be if something was permanently installed at like Ivy 99 or something. Um, in terms of citizen reaction. Equipment that they hang up with the approval of ODOT in the city. So then if they do that and they show us the data, then it's our job to sell it to the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get in touch with Redflex to see if we can locate the previous data that was several years ago. Yeah. Interesting to see that. But it was that was overwhelming. It was it was sad. Because it was I so can't imagine it got better. Um, it was, I, I, I was shocked how relatively dangerous it was. Yeah. But Especially the illegal let of uh, the turns on red. But our police yeah. chief wasn't interested. Well, you know, uh, he retired. Yes, yeah, they so uh, have wait for the new one, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Eric has his hand. Yes. Uh, Eric. Hey, so, um, my input on this would be I love the idea both of the every aspect of it period the one comment that I would have is that on the flashing lights that say you know you're going 20 over or 5 over have those lights instead of white be red and blue <laughs> the more of attention getting and I know I've, I've been on the receiving end of it and so it got my attention, no matter what what I was doing. So um, I think that would be an excellent idea, and I I love everything about it. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, we'll. That's another idea that's per, going to percolate a little bit as we find more data, and I'll keep you informed about where we're going with that. Um, jumping back to old business, I forgot, was our old second and third street. <laughs> where are we? Where are we as moving second and third street recommendations forward? Jerry, did you, you guys have anything with that traffic study that? Uh, I apologize. Brianna sent me the traffic study, and I have not had time to read it. OK. But Brianna, did you have a chance to glance at it um, on the second, third for that apartment? What did I forget what you called it? Yes, I did. Great. Covered. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Do you have specific questions about it? Well, we kind of want to know if did we follow what the recommendation was on that traffic study, Brianna, or did we? What took? I know there. I know they talked about site clearance stuff in there. I glanced at that, but did we? Did we address those issues, or did what happened with that? You know. Um, yes, everything has been addressed. The only outstanding thing is the site distance and that will be verified by the engineer before occupancy. Oh, oh, okay. Well, that's good. Did you hear what she said? No. She said that everything was addressed in the traffic study except the vision clearance coming out of it. And she said that will have to be addressed before they give them occupancy. Correct. Uh, so, so by vision, which is by vision, by vision uh, of clearance, does it mean that on a particular side of the street they're going to eliminate parking? Um, that's not. Well, that's what it calls. Well, what it calls for is to be cleared of any um, of parking, of vegetation, of anything that's in the way of 280 feet of sight distance in either direction. 
and whatever they're actually going to call the need for 280 feet of site distance would kind of impact what it is we're recommending to the community or anybody else with regards to parking. So that to me is kind of a sticking point of how we can make a recommendation that would actually be applicable and useful to the community moving forward. So I guess Brianna, is the question is really, is the, the preparation of site and that clearance, how much feet and how much is the city going to require them to actually have cleared? So the site distance is not a straight line along, you know, the right of way. It's actually, I mean, it's an engineering concept. So it has to do with, you know, the, the way the road is built. So it's not going to be 280 feet of no parking, no vegetation. Um, vision clearance is more of a triangle. So a lot of that linear distance that you're concerned about the, you know, that 280 number, a lot of that is actually going to be sort of the line of sight into the actual street where things are not supposed to be located anyway. Okay. So we, so we, we don't really know the, the, the amount of no parking in some ways, we can't get a definitive answer about how much red lined sidewalk we're not going to allow parking. Uh, oh, right here is the, I think that's what she just said. I, I brought it up here on a site that's true. Prior to occupancy, is that what you just read, Brianna? Prior to occupancy site distance at the access point will need to be verified by a registered civil engineer. Okay. Yes. So, so the engineers think that it will be sufficient. That's why they're not requiring it, you know, before we approved it, <laughs> they just need it kind of as verification, but it is an engineering concept. So no, I don't have the, you know, exact sort of distance it would take, um, potentially none, potentially maybe a parking spot on either side. Um, it's not going to be 280 linear feet along the street. Okay. Who's the engineer that's doing that? Um, will that be their, this D, will it be DKS? Will it be the engineer that did the project? It should be the engineer on the applicant team, but DKS reviews it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that kind of thing is up in the air. It's going to be an answer. The question I, I want to push, I have an agenda push, is I think there's two different issues here. One is the whole need to do something with this street, which spins around uh, traffic flow safety and also the fire department being able to respond to emergencies. And that's the primary issue. The solution has come down to eliminating parking on one side. What side is it totally up to input from the citizenry and things like that? So, you know, I, I've done investment. The question for this committee is, are we going to move on those issues? And the fact that we don't know how, what side of the road, it, to me, is immaterial because that can be decided later. The question is, do we think there's a safety issue on that street? that we should be recommending to the city to do something about. What that is, is, you know, so. From what I see, there is an issue with that street already because you got too many people parking on the street because they don't have parking, parking on their own properties, which is normal, I mean, normal in the older communities and like newer subdivisions where you should have adequate parking. But I know um, I go down there to get my hair done um, and it gets me when every time I'm coming back, I normally encounter somebody and it's like, everyone's like eyeing each other, like who's pulling over to let the other person in because there's too many cars parked on the street. Yeah. I mean, it's a bad, it's a bad situation. And when they put in that new building, it, it'll probably it's get worse. worse. But at the same time, 
I don't want to be responsible. If there's a fire and a house burns down because the, the fire department couldn't put the ladder truck, that's unconscionable too. The only other solution I thought about was the city was to indemnify the fire department and say they will cover the lawsuits that they get to use their, their fire truck and if a car is in the way, they just put those those supports out and crash the car. I think it would yeah. be that. You push the cars out of the way. Well, you just do and then we sort it out with the insurance later. At that point, you don't not I mean you don't let a car get your way. Yeah. Unless it's Gary Potter's Chevy. You know, I agree, Bob. I agree. That's that's what we kind of need to identify with fire. And I mean, this is going to be a lot of political thing on council, which, but it's a safety. We kind of need to get, we, we need that closure on this, though. I, I don't yeah. think we need a closure. And, and I think if at best, maybe one of the solutions is to ask if the city council would allow us to present this issue at one of their executive sessions. Okay. Not an executive session. Oh, okay. And the reason being is there's no ORS to cover it. Okay. It, it could be at a work session or bring well, it to oh, yes. I think That would be good, a work session before the council meeting to see what the council thinks about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You, talk, you know. talk to Scott and, and Brian and we can call it a work have, session. Agenda. Have fire there, have... But there's three specific Oregon statutes that protect executive session and okay. this wouldn't fall under any of them. All right. You you know best what terminal what what where we could fit. That's why you're early. <laughs> um, so traffic's <laughs> concerned. They had identified there's an issue. Now it's the next level is to ask council what their thoughts are. Well I, I, I would like to like presentation. These. I would suggest getting the fire district on board with your presentation and have them there as well. Yes. It's it's gonna take the fire saying, oh yeah, we can't we can't do our job if these cars are in the way for that's the they have they've signed a letter. <laughs> I got them to sign a letter saying that, that they support this and, and they would be willing to come and testify. That would take yeah. a lot of heat off council too. And it, it would it would show me this show legitimate it, safety it, uh, it would show the ground that's, that's, yeah. that's a good idea Bob. I think that's the best way to handle this. So what I put out to the group is, is there support for us to bring this issue to the city council's work session just to explain the situation to them? Yes, Jen. Do we want to be addressing this for any street that's this width because we're talking about second and third because of the multifamily that's going in it brought it to our attention and it might be something that there's a delineation between a 30 foot wide street that has multifamily on it needs to be considered differently than a 30 foot wide street anywhere else but we have streets all over the city that are going to have the same kind of issue. And while we're focused on this because of the multifamily and getting back in those lots, that doesn't mean that it isn't an actual safety issue for anybody living on any of these streets, regardless of that. Because we know they're going to be using the ladder fire truck primarily for any fire. And if you're trying to go down six and there's cars on both sides or you know any other street the elm any other streets that have cars on both sides of the street it could be an issue so i feel like there's a little bit of consideration for that are we saying this is what you should do for any street that isn't wide enough to support the modern fire truck in a modern age in a non-modern neighborhood of canby and then is there a special recommendation specific to second and third because of the multifamily units i think that's well, what you know, talking about well, Thank this you. plan is specifically for second and third, but I think what Jenny's saying is address it globally. This is the situation at hand, yes, but the, we could have a similar street with a similar situation in the future, and then we just automatically fall within this criteria we're setting now. Didn't we have an issue with fire and parking and the Northwoods development? Yeah. That little spur? How, what did we end up doing there? Did we, we make took, any parking? We took parking away on one side. So and in all future development, 
we put this, we painted it yellow before anyone moved in there. So they knew there was no harm. So we didn't get beat up. Right. So we're moving on it. Second and third street is, I think a little bit more brings it to the concern because of the development, but also because it is a, it has become a connector street too, because of the flow of traffic through it. Uh, even public works, big trucks have a, see, I, my, they were beating me up about it. My truck's got a four foot longer wheelbase. Yeah. We have lot issues. But you can't, you can't, you have that same problem that with oncoming yeah. traffic, you've got to try yeah. to yeah. One has to yeah. The, you guys get what, big, so you can run over the car in front of you. Yeah, what fire needs to do, though, fire needs, before we can start really addressing stuff, fire needs to get, like, a, a, have my design standards adjusted. They need to have, they need to have us adopt the design standards that meets their equipment. Well, and right. then, and then, and then it's, it's just how it is. This is what you, you know, cause it's just case by case. You were, you, you've been to a meeting now and it's, they don't really have any. And so right now we're building everything on public works design standards that my equipment, school buses, everything can get around good. Well, now we've bought a giant ladder truck and it's changed and we haven't adjusted our standards according yet. And so when I got the information from fire, it's like, your truck's like way smaller than all of mine. And so you need to get us something that shows what the criteria is, what you need to have, what clear space, you know, and that's where it gets difficult because it goes to council. They're going to say, okay, so Jerry, why don't you change your design standards or what are you doing now? And, I, and I'm going to say, well, I don't have any information on that, that they changed it. So Matt was going to try to get stuff from Hillsboro or someone else that has similar truck because they're, I think, city adopted this, but that would be super helpful too, Bob. Well, is to get if they, if buyer could come and say, this is what we got. This is what we need to adopt. And then any street in the city that doesn't meet this, we need to fix and address. Well, yeah. And if not fix and address, just take into consideration in adding any new projects to an existing neighborhood, because we can change the design standard for new things moving forward. And that design standard could apply to reworking existing streets. But in situations where you can't rework the existing street or there's no plan to in the future, then adding something that doesn't make it livable for everybody else or for, you know, fire to have access might not be a wise move forward. You know, I, that's my big beef with this. It's like it really screws 73 houses in two blocks completely because it just really tips it over the edge. It was already too much and it already needed to be addressed. And then we added just more fuel to the situation to make it that much more complicated. I, I don't know how we build this or do this without knowing what they need exactly. Just taking parking away, okay, that fixes it, they say, right? Or what fixes, is it? But or but or does it? Or you know, just but but just going and saying I want this isn't how I operate. Yes, and I but the safety thing, Bob really concerns me. You know, I don't want someone to die or burn up in a house in the meantime. And I think, I think you've been put in a bad situation and I think we need to fix it. And I think, I think fire needs to come to this work session and say, this is what we need and you guys need to adopt it. And what are we going to do from here on out? From here on out, we're going to build streets this way, period. And then the question to council is, or council can ask, how do we want to address these current issues that we have? And, and then we're covered, right, Tracy, with uh, standards that we can follow, that fire follows, because we just went through Mark's Place subdivision over here, the same thing. Uh, it got clear through the pre-construction, and now fire saying we can't, we can't do it. <laughs> and they're like, why not? It's this wide. And then they got turning radiuses and it sort of, it causes confusion. I was like, well, what do you need? Well, they just say, take parking away on, take all parking away. Well, that's tough because now the developer is ready to build and now they don't know what to do because they don't have any parking in their subdivision. And so 
I just don't know how you do this without having some sort of standard to follow. I don't think it's fair to any of us. The fire requirements should be way earlier in the process. And yes, please. <laughs> Sorry. We take, we say, take a look at this. This is what we want. I look it over. I have my engineer look it over. I say, this is reasonable. Then I go to our city council and say, we need these adopted. Um, let's update our design standards. Let's amend them. We adopt them. And then I think you can go after all this stuff. And that would actually start with the on. And it would go through the planning commission. I mean, I don't know what the answer is. Are you willing to attend a meeting? Absolutely. Which I will organize between you, fire, and myself as well, a pre-meeting and any of you who would like to come about this discussion. I think this would be helpful, Bob, and I would love to attend so that we can nail this down. I need something that I can put on the cover sheet showing this is okay. and then fire, you need to follow the uh, look at the updated. Okay. Public works design standards to meet fire, and then we have teeth on everything in the past because it's changed. It's a new design center, but that and it's not just functional. It saves us liability, us being the city. You know, it's just it covers all the bases. That road was approved by the planning department when it was put in. Right now, all our trucks have gotten bigger. I just think it's only fair to the people that live there, to you, to us, to the council. To have that meeting, Bob, figure out how we want to get our standards, and then we go and approach council saying, "Okay, so we're going to update our standards." So here's the plan. Yeah. Sorry, I, I'm trying to. No, you're fine. You know, sometimes I'm rude, and because I'm trying to measure the time. So I hear a saying, and unless I hear somebody objecting, okay, our plan is to ultimate plan is to ask the city to console for us to go to a, to a work session. Is that correct, Tracy? They may not tell us, go fly a kite, but uh, I'm hoping they'll approve us to make a presentation at a, at a work session for the city council, okay? So that's our goal. And our goal would be to present this issue about how there are safety issues on this, this particular street, but it could apply to others, okay? And prior to that, asking Tracy to schedule something, we need to have a meeting between any of you guys who want to attend, um, public works and the fire department. And planning. And planning. Um, to sit down and to try to see if this whole issue can be systematized and put into the regular expectations yep. of a developer. Before they, they start to do stuff. I, I, I just don't feel comfortable about changing a street that's currently been there for 50 years or whatever when, when we're still building the same streets. Right. Yep. Yeah. And that, that, that's cool. That we should, so we have two tracks. See, I don't have a problem changing the present street because that's the presented issue. Mm -hmm. But I do think I don't want to ignore a system problem that we should simultaneously. Oh, right, we could fix this problem and just create it again somewhere else. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we, 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 need to, we need to work on both, but I do think we need to do something in, in within a, within my lifetime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, think, I think if we meet with fire, have them put together something like that they would like the city to adopt, we then schedule a work session. We go have fire, I'll be there. You will be there. We'll explain this to the city council. And I think that would make you guys a lot more comfortable. And we give city. everybody the data that they would ask for anyway. I think that's a good plan. Okay. Because well, I, I, I want to answer a lot of questions from the council yeah. at this point. So do come with an already answered. Yeah. Yes. And because I want to emphasize it isn't just a fire department issue. I mean, there is an issue on that street, it's a busy street. And people having to work in trucks, public works trucks, you know, cars, you know between fire school buses, school buses, buses and things like that. Yeah. And it's going to get worse. That right now, or actually not even right now, be when it was still COVID back in the, it was summer of last year, they did a um, traffic study. And in two days, there were 1500 cars. So it was half of what territorial is when it was still COVID time in the summer and we didn't have the school traffic. 
Like it's a really busy street and that's third. They didn't look at second, but they're busy streets. And so I really want that to be something we're paying attention to too, because they're not just tiny little side streets, despite the fact that they're physically small. And so I, 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 I want to emphasize there's two different partners. Yeah. I mean, there's a safety traffic safety issue on that street and there's a fire issue on that street, you know, it's just, so do I hear any opposition to my trying to organize this, this meeting? <laughs> Not again. All right. Thank you. Uh, city reports. Fire gave us their- Hey, Bob. Bef Bob, before we move off to second and third, Brianna had brought up something to show what the site distance looks like, um, what the site distance triangle would potentially look like from one of the engineers. Brianna, are you still on? Would you be able to show that to everybody? I am. That was just an example. Um, oh, okay. It yeah. was just an example, not that one. Um, well, would you bring it up anyways? Because I wanted to show everybody that and point out something else. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So while she's bringing that up, so where the apartment entryway is being built is offset approximately 50 feet from the intersection with Grant at third. Um, right now, um, Jerry had gone out for us a while back and done, I think it was 30 feet that we blocked off on the corners um, to just say, don't park right, right up to the intersection. And that was just kind of like generally being applied um, to an intersection. But when we get the site distance thing up, you're going to see uh, it's a triangle from where the car is kind of out at an angle to the left and the right. And I would assume that it includes across the street, maybe. Um, and if it doesn't include across the street, if we just looked at what should you have as sight distance on Grant, which is like the same size as the entrance in and out of the apartment, um, we should probably have more distance blocked off to the immediate left and right if you're on Grant turning on to third. So that when you see this picture, it'll make a little more sense than just the words. But okay, can you guys see this picture? Yeah. Yes. The line of sight of the intersections. Okay, so what we're looking at in reality at, um, at third and Grant is pretty much the same thing, but that car in the bottom, instead of being directly across from the intersection, would be offset a couple feet to the right. So you see that the line of sight is out to the left I mean, for the, um, you know, the uh, lane closest and out to the right to the lane furthest. If we flipped that around, or just consider the opposite side that's not currently marked with a car, that's Grant and third. So we should have a line of sight triangle from that, not just 30 feet around the corner, which is what we have now, because that's considerably smaller. And that is a big safety issue in this neighborhood is when you're turning off of Grant onto third, you can't see anything. And there are cars up to very close to, um, to Grant itself. Um, it sounds like it's a very long-term issue with there being big semi-trucks and just a bunch of kind of junk that's in the, um, the northeastern corner there. Um, again, presuming that in this image, Grant would be the unmarked part of the um, intersection. Um, but I think we should, I, I don't know how to go about it, but I think in terms of making recommendations and being safe about the access to getting in and on of third, we should be really considering what is happening at Grant as well as what's happening at the apartment. We have that 280 site distance because we pushed to have a traffic study done for the apartment and the access, but I think we might really wanna seriously consider how we, we could or should be applying something to Grant and third as well, and not just those tiny corners. Sorry, I repeated myself a bit, but you thank you guys. Yeah, I got it. Brianna, I'll share screen. Okay. There you see that. Did you say stop or do you want me to reshare? Uh, can I share? Yeah. Well, since you are screen sharing, but can you see it? Yeah, there you go. Yep. I don't know how we did it, but she said it. They can see it. <laughs> they said they can see you it. You can see it. We're on Grant Street looking at the and it's yep. Google Earth. Okay. 
And that's what I think that's the big concern. Oh. Is there an exciting distance? And just depends on how close to that intersection people are parking and and things like that. Science here. Is that what we're talking about? And the entryway to that apartment is from four feet away from that yellow house. So closer than that tiny little street, uh, tiny little tree that's up there to the left, and then all of those trees to that existing driveway. So from right that existing driveway up to like literally where you could spit on the yellow house is where that entryway is. So when you're back on Grant, you can see that it's just barely offset from the intersection. Yeah. Okay. Here's the this is 2013. Oh, okay. They haven't updated yeah, it. Yeah, 10 years ago. Is it old? Old. Okay, so what, so what are we saying we need to go off of what Brianna showed on her? Yeah. Well, she was just showing that the site triangle, so if you go back to your original um, vantage point of where you started on Grant. Right. Okay, so you're if you're here, if you are at the stop sign up at Grant and Third, we should have a site triangle that goes across the street to the left, which is going to be open because of the apartments. I don't think we have to do anything special there. But then also something that includes to the right, which is the closest lane to you, which is right there in front of where that red bush is and the stop sign around the corner, I think we probably need to be blocking that off more. In my personal experience driving a sedan, you cannot see anything at the stop sign. And as you inch forward a little bit to try and see if it's clear or not, it is not an awesome situation. If you are not in a lifted, if you're not in a truck or something that's considerably higher, you cannot see anything to turn off of Grant onto third. And if that, and so I'm just saying it, if that Japanese it vehicle back. is mature, you won't be able to see past that Japanese maple because that's one. It's the, in the way. Of, that's one of the things in my neighborhood as well. You got to pull almost halfway out into the lane of traffic before you see the oncoming uh, cars. Yeah, and I think that that would definitely help. But I think if there's a car right to oh, where yeah. it's currently marked red, then you can't see around the car either. So it's not just a landscape thing. It's definitely a availability of where oh, yeah. cars would be allowed to park too. And yeah. also where it's fairly empty here right now, you see something that looks like a blue school bus. There's something almost out to the sidewalk now. There's like a semi truck bed right there. Um, there's just again a pod and all kinds of crap, just like <laughs> yeah, excuse my language. There's all kinds of stuff um, piled up there that completely blocks the line of sight as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just saying since from across with the apartments we need the line of sight. I think a street, a two lane public street that's not even two blocks from 99 needs to have some sight distance applied to just from a basic safety perspective. We're too close to 99 and there's just too much traffic on third that it really, I think, needs more attention. Right. I'm going to move us along. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. Sorry, well, I didn't mean to jeopardize it. A lot of reports here. It is important. It is important. You're not, uh, I'm just moving us along because I, I want to make sure that we're through here by 1030 at the latest. Um, so, Staff and city reports, you, you guys have got the re monthly report for the police department. Yeah. And I'm going to applaud, make sure I talk to um, our email officer maker for this. You had a new attachment, uh, which is monthly traffic crash reports, which I've always wanted to have um, to get an idea of where the accidents are occurring. And to see if there's a if there's a commonality to it all. So I'm hoping to take this and put it on a map and put a dot next to it, and and see if there's a common pattern that starts to develop. You know. Uh, so anyway, we thank him for that. Planning department, any anything you want to talk about, Brianna? Um, nothing project wise. I'll mention both Don and Ryan are out of the office. Um, at least for another week, probably more. So we're doing what we can here. Thank you so much. I yes. know you're very busy. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I don't really have much. We're just buttoning everything up. You know, projects as normal and everything's kind of running smooth right now. Much <laughs> 
Thank you. City of Lisa. I don't have any ports either. Okay, far enough here. Deanne. Okay, um, just a couple of things. Uh, my mom and other citizens have been mentioning what was discussed earlier about the ODOT with uh, Redwood Sequoia. How uh, my mom noticed it the other day when she went through there, she said there were a lot of people running a red light because the light didn't stay green very long. So just trying to make sure that we do the like contact ODOT like Sherry mentioned. I'll call again today yeah. too. Yeah, and then the other question I had was the tap the um, over by Dutch Brothers, they still have the outdoor space and they're taking up a handicap spot. And they moved the handicap spot. Oh, okay. Okay. And it's private property and it's been quite the source of contention. And <laughs> they will be allowed and it will be a permanent okay. outdoor seating area. Um, like the, the, how it looks right now is temporary while they work on a more permanent solution, okay. um, which will kind of be like a sidewalk island extend the sidewalk out okay. um, but those for those uh, handicapped spots are already moved and they stay where they are now okay okay so wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't that development have been approved based on a, the specific amount of parking being available I didn't hear the question what was that wouldn't that project like that development of businesses have been approved based on a minimum amount of parking being available um, there is usually a parking requirement. I don't know if taking two spots out pulls them under that kind of minimum. I don't know. I'll bet it does. If anybody wants to use that as a basis for shutting it down, I'm sure it does. I, I mean, I can answer that. I'll question. put money on it. Okay, cool. What's up? And then it's Brianna can answer that question. There we says. go. She's still with us. Brianna can answer that. Yes, we did a parking analysis that. Uh, complex is approved when the parking counts in the code were higher. Um, our parking counts have since been lowered in our code, so they met the code at the time and they meet the code now. Um, I personally went out there and counted spaces and got square footage um, for each of the tenant spaces, did the calculations based on their uses, and they are right at the required number of 97 spaces. All right. Okay, so there you go. Okay, thank you. With those being used. Okay. I stand corrected. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Strike and not change where the handicap went. So handicap okay. spots. I just want to make sure that we're talking about there. They're just no longer in the middle of the building, they're on the end. Yeah. But that's really up to him to do with what the code says. Yeah. Okay. And his neighbors now. So that's what right. I intend. No, thank you. <laughs> 97 spots is there parking behind that strip mall or something wow. behind verizon and stuff how is there 97 in there okay uh, good good question is that it's always crowded and i don't think you're more than 20 spaces at all there's parking all along the shrubbery um behind dutch bros and, well, and around the verizon store there's also parking between the shrubs and uh, the KFC A&W, there's like two rows there. They just don't get well, used. Well, that, yeah. All right. Huh. Gary. <clears throat> Gary, do you have any concerns that you want to bring up? No, I was just questioning the 97 spaces. <laughs> All right. Um, Jack. Maybe we can add signs that there's additional parking because I had no idea and I go in there all the time. If there's 18 spaces for a tie corner, I didn't, you know, I thought they had like the three in front. So it might just be a community service to put in some uh, signage that lets people know that there's places to go. Yeah. Well, you got UPS there as well. This is busy all the time. I would welcome well, they only needed a couple, yeah. but you yeah. see is uh, called Stephanie. Got it. Okay. Yeah. We welcome you guys to go and bring out Google Earth and you can see that there's a large open spaces on the uh, Dutch brother side of the area where the old <laughs> word king used to be. Right. Well, maybe maybe we should have our next meeting at the um, Kentucky Fried Chicken and Dutch Brothers and <clears throat> make it. <laughs> do I do I do, do I make a motion here? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to go. That's gonna be council. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Jackie, Jackie, if you have any. Concerns. I do actually. 
You gotta Google Earth. Absolutely. Because I brought up last month that fishing with people parking in front of that house. Where are we going? I don't know. Oh, in US Bank. I think it's Second Street. Oh, on North Side? South Side. South Southtown, right here. And there's a, yeah, there used to be a yellow house that was brown. Yeah, they painted it. So this house, yeah. this house? That little tiny house that's on my this Do you want street view? Yeah, because there's a car, people keep parking in front of it. Yep. And on the second? Yeah, they're parking right there. On L. They park like right Oh, they're parking on L. They're right there. Right here? Yeah. Which, oh. which is, I mean, so people are going into that yellow area. They're going into the oncoming traffic lane to get around the car. There shouldn't be any parking there, right? There should, there's no sign. There's no yellow parking. on the other side of the intersection. There's no. That's no parking. Well, there's no sign. There's no yellow. Okay. So can another, you guys share that? Could you guys share that with the, uh, the screen here? It was just in your room. Can you guys see it now? Yeah, thank no. you. <clears throat> right in here. Yeah. So we need to paint that yellow. Yes. Yeah. yeah. As you say on the weekends, they're parking there, of course. I noticed it the other day too when I was talking to palms. So it's not just the workers anymore, now there's regular cars that are parking there. And I don't see any, there's probably a sign there, but yeah, okay, so we just need to paint that all yellow. Because mm -hmm. yeah, otherwise you're going in the oncoming traffic. It really is a narrow yeah. lane there, you can't. I mean, most people would think, like, well, I can't park here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's a yes. Good That's point. And we haven't started painting yet, so yes. we'll get. <laughs> All the other servers on the other corners are yellow. Yeah, we haven't. <laughs> 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 yeah, I really like this. Cool, this is really nice. All right. Jessica, <laughs> yeah. I think that's all I have. Thank you. Jenny. Hello, Jenny. Is that me? Yep. Hi. Um, the big thing that I would bring up, and it just ties into good old second and third again, is can we please look at putting in a stop sign at Grant and Second, just like this intersection, but one block to the east over by um, the auto body place? I, on a near daily basis, see people blow through the intersection of Grant and Second. There's a stop sign on Second right. on either side of Grant. Grant is a straight through. I think it really needs to be a four-way because nobody sees and pays attention to the stop signs on second. And if we can't make them pay attention to the existing stop signs, we can at least add some new stop signs where it's clear visibility on grants. So those people are stopping and making sure they're not getting T-boned by somebody blowing through. So it's a, they're stopping on second, but you want, you want a stop sign on grant also? Yeah. On, yeah, I think we need a stop sign on grants, yes. At, at the intersection with second, because right now there's only stop signs on second. When you look at Elm one block down, it's a four-way stop. This should be a four-way stop too. I tell you what, why don't we, before we make that recommendation, you know, with the group, uh, why don't we bring it up next month? Everybody go visit that intersection. Please. Okay. Yeah, I know exactly. It's a bad intersection. This is it's the, usually a car that's straight out to the corner. Well, on the other day, I saw somebody from La Schwab was trying to get out, and they had to have somebody out to kind of block somebody from trying to turn because he was, it was a big truck trying to get out. It was kind yeah. of crazy. So we will. And this, this image is really open. You can see July of 13. There's not parking lined on all four sides of the street, um, but there is now. So that adds to the difficulty and visibility as well. Four-way stop on Grant and second, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. And now, if you really want to see it in all its full destructive glory, come off of third and head north on Grant. Um, that's the worst approach an issue where you would be, you know, look like you have a clear right of way, but then somebody will just cross from second, not stopping, um, or thinking that it's clear. Um, but try it from all four angles. Have a good time. <laughs> Be careful. Thank you for the for the ride. <laughs> all right, Eric. Do you have any things you want to bring up? No, sir. I am good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anything else for the good of the business? 
Um, just a heads up for everyone. I accepted a new position, so I need to talk to my uh, boss. I start with on Monday to see if I'll be able to come to the weekly meetings or not. Um, I'm in a controller CFO role, and um, I have some um, work to do that's not here in Canby. I'm going to be working in Beaverton. So trying to see um, if they'll allow me to be able to be late on um, once a month. I think it'll be fine, but I just need to kind of see how they are with it. Sure. So, Congratulations. That sounds like a good, a good new role. Congratulations. Yep, thank you. You can tell them that you are a, a valuable community <laughs> service that you're rendering that we yeah. appreciate. No, no, I'm hoping that it'll be fine, but I may have to, um, in the interim, just kind of let you guys know sure. ahead of time if I can attend or not. So, yeah. but, we do the, but we do offer Zoom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah I had to flex three hours in my work the Zoom thing up at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a long day. Okay, that's why I'm trying to Seven keep years. us, you know, yes. marshal the time. So thank you very much, everyone. Our next meeting is on August 10th uh, at 8.30. And I will keep you informed. Uh, thank you all for participating and making time in your uh, schedules to attend. I hope that I, I like this place that we're public works. It, it, uh, it's pretty it was fancy, easy and, uh, and it worked really well. Like, uh, A lot better. Yeah, Thank you. And, and I thought the sound system worked pretty good. Right, Gary? Yes, sir. Works fine. Thank you very much. It was a very okay. productive meeting. I'm glad Thank to be a part you. of this. Thank you, Brianna. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Have a Thank good you. day. Thank you all. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. See you, Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. I appreciate your participation. Sure. And your console told me how to figure out things. Yes, of course. <laughs> so I'm at Whitman's on Alpha. Here's the bank. Yeah. Over and out. US Bank, yeah. Okay. We need to paint this curve yellow. Oh, right along that thing. Yeah, I can, can do, you do a work order. order. Okay, cool. Thanks, Marla. Okay. Oh, I guess I can get Easy fix. Okay, we'll be in touch.